and even the parking inspectors wearing their club colours. Good afternoon. Welcome to Subiaco Oval. It's grand final day, a magnificent day for the big one this afternoon between East Perth searching for their 14th premiership while Claremont are searching for their 10th. It's going to be a magnificent afternoon. There's uh, a familiar South Fremantle player, John Dorotich, amongst the crowd down there. And let's have a look at the way the crowd has built up so far for this big one here. Well, there it was earlier <laughs> in the day. And slowly the crowd started to come in. And Trevor Sprig, I would estimate now about 25,000 here at least. Yes, and I think it's even building up a little more, TJ, as we speak. Look at that shot there. There's some very enthusiastic supporters here. We're in for an absolutely terrific day. I sense something like a very close result. One kick either way, TJ. And one gets the same feeling as we did last year, Wally, when West Perth brought all this atmosphere and a wonderful feeling. East Perth may do the same again today with their appearance. I don't think there's anything, to, uh, any doubt about that, Trevor. It's uh, going to be a very much a pro East. Perth House. We noticed that in the second semi-final. The only thing I would say is I suspect there will be some sentiment for Claremont simply because of the fact that every Claremont player, all of the 21, are all West Australians. East Perth have nine non-West Australians in their team and I think that may sway some of the neutral supporters a little bit but it'll be a pro East Perth House. Don't worry about that. And here they come now. Here come the Royals. That's unbelievable. I think now we know where the crowd is, as if we didn't before. <laughs> we strive to win yesterday, today, and tomorrow. The banner red for the East Perth Royals. Watch for the bonding. And Richard Graham is already. there. Richard Graham has run out there. It's whether he's playing. There's another yes. point. It's been a difficult week for uh, Kevin Worthington, hasn't it? With Ryan Turnbull available, he's got two players who have helped carry this team into the grand final in Richard Graham and young Tim Williams. And Craig Jackamill there, number 47, is there as well. I think this is a boy of running out a few more while. So, uh, I mean, he's had to make some very difficult decisions. And, of course, Loving wasn't available for the second semi-final, has become available. That decision was made easier by Will Ponder's injury. But yes. it'll be a tough decision for Kevin Worthington and his selection panel regarding Ryan and Turnbull's availability. The Tigers break through the banner for 1996. They won it in 1993 when they beat a young West Perth side. And they have been the team of the 90s, really, Trev. They've won four grand finals so far in the 90s. It's a marvellous record from a club that really has stood out tall since 1977 when Graham Moss took over. Yes, and Daryl Panizza has been involved in some of those as a player. He will think today if he can coach Claremont to the Premiership, it will be an even greater achievement than playing in any of them. There's Chris Lewis. Seems to be moving OK at that pace. So I did spy Paul Burton, number seven, in the group. So I think both teams have got about 23 or four players out there. Well, OK, while the players go through their warm-ups, let's have a look at the East Perth side as Wally alluded to no David Wirrapunda bad luck for him and of course Spiro Malice another one who pulled a hamstring during the week so two players really who helped build East Perth this year won't be there this afternoon but that's how we'll think they'll line up and that's going to be a hard side to beat yes a most important player Braden Lyle there he may line up against that player Don Pike uh, which will be a terrific battle and the Claremont lineup pretty stable from before from the second semi and preliminary final with uh, Phil Gilbert can line up at either end of the ground. Big Egan job for Egan. Yeah, Egan and Stone, the big jobs against White and Turnbull, respectively. And they need plenty from Todd Ridley, too, and uh, Phil Gilbert, because they've just had a bit of trouble in front of goals. Their accuracy's been a worry, and they'll be hoping today that Gilbert and Ridley have their kicking boots on. Wherever you are around Western Australia, welcome to the Grand Final of 1996, live on ABC television. There's the bounce to start. Up goes Turnbull, he beats Egan for the knock, knocked it about 10 metres forward, picked up there in the middle by Bathiris, Loving is dumped to the ground, and the first free kick of the match going to Scott Loving, a reckless tackle applied by Spencer. Now it's going to Turnbull. Turnbull's drop punt, clears the 50 easily, big pack up includes Jerine, Marshall and Colbun get tangled up, Colbun stands up almost in the tackle, it comes down towards Gilbert, who gets a hand pass over the white line, out of bounds, about 45 metres around from the East Perth goal. Early days in the grand final. White has started at centre half forward, Stone his opponent. Throw in just inside East Perth's 50 metre line. The Royals quickly into attack. White up, behind him was Stone, taken off hands by Scott Edwards. This is Swan at right full forward, he was out of play. Boundary umpire was right on the spot. 
And this throw-in will take place about 35 metres around from the East Perth goal. In their right full forward pocket, they're kicking with the wind in the first quarter after Paul Pios had won the toss. Stone again with White. Stone did well to take front position. Clement get it outside 50 metres, but it's about to go back. Hand pass comes across to Lyle, hooks it down towards the forward pocket. Colbung has the ball knocked away by McGovern. Another throw in at right full forward for East Perth. A timely tap then against Sean Colbung by Andrew McGovern. Jamie Marillo's got the job on Braden Lyle, and big one it will be. Stone and White do battle again. It clears both players. At the back was Pike. Diving in there is Muir. Tried to shovel it out. Very congested pack. Marshall gets a hand pass out wide. Fairmont player down behind play as Ferguson hugs the white line with that drop punt. Up goes Turnbull one-handed. The ball ricochets off the play as it goes out of bounds. Scott, Scott Edwards. Edwards. Scott Edwards has played in Claremont's last two premiership teams. He's looking for a hat-trick of premiership medals and he's in trouble in the opening minutes. This time it'll be Egan and Turnbull. Egan wins front spot. Turnbull a big thump to the side of the pack. Going back is uh, Murillo. This possesses Bathyrus. And uh, the umpire says too high. Rupert Bathyrus. Forward of right centre wing. Probing kick towards Jerine, but it's wide of him. And Gilbert takes a safe mark in defence. Gee, not a good enough contest from Chris Jerine then. Gales made room from the members wing across to the outer wing. Clement get out of defence. Gales had two bounces. Gets the kick around Bathyrus down towards the centre wing. Good kick. Ridley on the end of it. Ridley was a very good player last week in the preliminary final. Gets it up towards half forward. Turnbull is there. Guard over the top. Turnbull off the ground. Close to the boundary line at left half forward for the Tigers. And that's where this throw-in will take place. Claremont, oh, sorry, uh, East Perth with a decisive height advantage. Egan is there, 32 for Claremont, opposed by Turnbull. Egan did well. Jones has it for East Perth. He's holding the ball, surely. Good tackling by the Claremont forwards. Swan has it to Colbung. The kick back onto centre wing. It's all Claremont, but they want to hurry. Murillo did hurry. Gets it across to a teammate, and here comes Edwards' kick in towards centre half forward. Wasn't a good kick. Another chance for the Tigers. Could have been holding the ball also. Turnbull off the ground. Another chance for Clem on the centre square, but East Perth have oh. the numbers. Oh. Player down behind Roger Perry. Didn't see what happened. Hancock kicks down towards half forward. Gorsi gets tied up with Miller. Jerine leads Gilbert to the ball. Gilbert outmanoeuvres him. In comes Gorsi to lend support. Miller is there and Gorsi puts it out of play. Throwing it left half forward for East Perth. I don't know whether we're going to see this again or not. There it is. Greg Egan on Roger Perry. Very ordinary. White in front. This time he's leaped though, didn't get near the ball. Pike uh, dispossessed. Edwards goes off the deck, back to the middle of the ground. This is guard, good pick up. Sweeping hand pass to Murillo from the crest on right centre wing. The kick towards Green, he's in front. With him as Faithful. And Faithful was hanging on. Brendan Green, 65 metres out. Crowd don't like it. Drop punt to the top of the square. Lewis in front of the back, Silcock. Comes down towards Perry. Perry gets a hand pass out wide, and away goes Barnard of East Perth. From inside his own defensive 50, he kicks to the wing on the outer side, and McGovern takes a well-judged mark, and he's away. Runs almost to the point of the square. Kick towards full four of East Perth going back through Jones, and it's Jones with a mark or free kick in the last line for the Royals. Wasn't a well-directed kick from McGovern. He would have had to go wide to find teammates, but there were two of them out in the left full forward pocket. Not a good kick either, intended for Colbunk. Missed the mark. McGovern gets the hand pass back, and here come the Tigers again. Lewis on the boundary line. Play on the call. Half volley. Means it must be out of play, yes. Boundary throw in 52 metres out from the Claremont goal. Still no score in the grand final. We've been playing just over five minutes, five and a half minutes. Spencer is there. Jones opposing him. Chance for Murillo from outside 50. Hooks to the front of the square. Players down behind play. Another chance for Claremont. Murillo again. There's no one in the goal square. Ridley going back with the flight of the ball. With him was Crow. Ridley keeps it in. No, he doesn't. Gee, it's pretty tough and tense already. 
It's tough and tight and hard. Look at the crowd, really enjoying this. Oh, it's terrific. No score in six minutes of play. Jones does the ruck work. Spencer reaches over the top pike, kicks into guard. Now Loving gets a hand pass upfield. Hancock, good evasion. Now finds a bit of space. Gets a kick off the side of the boot, out of bounds. And a free kick going to Stone of Claremont. No, it's going to go to Edwards. Stone gives it up. So Edwards has recovered from that heavy knock he received a few moments ago. Forward of right centre wing. Drop punt looks okay. Ridley the target. Lewis flies too early. Faithful bumped over by Muir. And Barnard clears to the outer side of the ground. It's Swan. Better judgment than Ferguson. Now watch this race. Swan. Ferguson in pursuit. Oh, well done. Holding the ball. Should have been holding the ball. Good pick up by uh, Perry. Hand pass away to Lyle in defence. He kicks it upfield. Too far for Swan. McGovern pushes it out. Now Ferguson. Now Ferguson kicks it towards half forward. In front Spencer. Fisted away by Jones. Taken by Guard. Guard kicks towards Ridley. Getting in the way was Faithful. Well done. Terrific work by Faithful to clear away for the Royals. That's intended for Hancock. Across comes Gale. Hancock took his eyes off the ball but got back into oh. the contest well. Murillo down behind play. Yes. Wire came in very solidly. Perry. Square up. Yeah, no risk. Bounces on left centre wing for East Perth. He Murillo. absolutely ran straight over the top of him. Murillo looking a little unsteady on his feet. Bounces at left centre wing. Members side for East Perth. Turnbull up, but straight down to Murillo. Took his eyes off it, regains possession. Pike, that's a relayed kick, not paid. Comes towards Faithful on the set on the half forward line. Green has it. Green loses it. Spencer goes in on top of Jones. And yeah, bounce just outside 50. One thing I want to say, Wally, the umpires are letting it go very well. Let the players sort it out. There's no need to over control this game. Let the players work out their level. Well done. About 30,000 watching the grand final of 1996. Jones wins a big thump. Chance here for Devon Perry. Backward of centre half back. He kicks to the middle of the ground. And the mark taken by his namesake, although it's not spelt the same. This is Roger Perry. Richard Graham and Craig Jackamel have just gone down the race, uh, Trevor. Shocking kick. Guard marks and then interfered with. And it should have been a penalty, I thought. Yeah. But they're letting it go. That's late. Oh, gee. Jeremy Guard, backward of left centre wing to half forward. Up in the middle, Spencer, but standing his ground is Roger Perry. And with the ankle bandages on, he gives it away to Jones. He kicks out wide. Colbung in front. McGovern's too tall there. Gets a hand pass upfield. Picked up, though, by Colbung. Defensively away to Perry. Kicks smothered brilliantly by Guard. Crumbs come to Swan. He runs into Guard. Breaks the tackle. Gives it away to Lyle. Lyle torpedoes towards uh, Loving. Up in front. Couldn't hold the mark. Still he goes. Scott loving at ground level, thumps it out wide to Turnbull. His hand pass sharked away by Ferguson, and with good judgment, he picks out guard. Measure the kick nicely. Oh. Guard kicks to centre half forward, but nobody home. And Faithful, although he misses the mark, has got time to recover. He's pulled off the kick, but it's out in front of Hancock. Gale in pursuit. Hancock's under pressure. He's got support, though. Crow gets the hand pass down the wing. In comes Pike off the ground, and it lands just inside the field of play. Well, there's a few things happening that I think the umpire should be aware of. The throw-in is at left centre wing for East Perth, members' side of the ground. Still no score in the grand final, and we've played nearly 10 minutes. Turnbull, clean possession. Pulled off the ball, should have been holding the ball. In comes Pike, picked up by Trovarello. Gale to Green. Green's in trouble. Gets a kick down towards half forward. Murillo, it's not Murillo, Murillo it's Muir is there with Barnard. At to sock it away by Pios. Another chance for Miller for East Perth. He gets his kick ahead of Muir's tackle. Down towards half forward. The mark in front of Stone. Jeff White is 60 metres from goal. Looks towards the square. The target here is Jerrion. Gilbert in front. Knocked away by Edwards. He gets it outside 50 and then gives chase. Perry is with him. Oh, well played, Scott Edwards. Sockers it up the centre wing. The only player there is faithful for Faris Perth. He gets around Ferguson and chips back to the half forward line and loving. Loving plays on quickly from 60 metres. Back towards full forward. Gilbert and White. His first back, Colbang is first goal of the game. Sean Colbang, Sean Colbang off the ground. He's first one goal straight. Clermont get the score. Well, the crowd going absolutely wild. 10 minutes 52 it took for a score in the game. Both coaches would be absolutely wrapped in the
the start they've made. There it was. The ball at Sean Colbach's feet. Andrew McGovern has done very well against him. Just one opportunity for the opportunist there. And he was able to finish off. And the champ goes up for the Royals. Look at that. 11 minutes for the first score. This is a last man standing go already. It's not as if both sides have had a chance to score. East Perth inside the 50 six times and Claremont five times. But there is there. Try to knock it on for East Perth. Pack develops. Miller's underneath there. And it'll be a bounce. It's not Miller. The last to get up. It's Hancock. The bounce about 15 metres. The attacking side of the centre for the Royals. Turnbull knocks it on. Ferguson's there though. Sweeps it out to Spencer. Spencer round his body wasn't effective but it landed with Trovarello. Pike finishes up with it and now a good lead from Ridley in front of Crow. 45 metres out and almost directly in front. Chance of the quick reply here, Trev. Yes, a terrific passage of play by Claremont out of the centre and a good hand pass to start it off from Ferguson. It was a bit fortuitous, that kick around the body. Only went about five metres but found a teammate. Yeah, the run pass was on from Don Pike. That was the important yes, kick. Yes, and the delivery. Yep. AFL experience in that kick from Pike that found Ridley. Listen to the crowd. They're booing Ridley as he drop punts at goal and kicks it. Scores a level. 12 and a half minutes into the grand final. Todd Ridley kicks Clemence first. Well, the answer in goal is what Daryl Panizza would have wanted after 10 minutes of the war of attrition. East Perth get the first one. And this is the way they got it. The scramble kick from Lane Spencer playing at centre-half forward. The hand pass came from Trovarello it was to Pike. Terrific lead there in front of Crow. Nothing he could do about it. And the experienced AFL player kicked through the ball nicely. And there's 10 of them in this Claremont team. 10 with AFL experience. Five in the East Perth team. As Turnbull wins the ball down, it comes eventually to Miller. Miller gets it to Hancock. And Hancock drives towards full forward and Jerine. With him is Gilbert. Jerine could easily have got the kick. But as Trevor Sprigg has already commented, the umpires have been consistent. So this throw-in is about 35 metres around from East Perth's left-hand behind post. They're kicking with the breeze, a fairly handy breeze in the first term. White gets it down, good tackle on Loving. Wasn't Loving, it was on Bathyrus. Here's Lewis having his first run on the ball. The kick was smothered, lands with Miller. Touch play on and into the ground goes Miller. Solid tackle by Nick Stone, buried him. Gee, an interesting situation here. Don Pike's gone to the forward pocket, changing with Chris Lewis, so... Certainly one of those experienced players being in the forward line all the time for the Tigers. Bounce of the ball, favoured White, thumps it to the 50 metre line. Shot an opportunity gone begging for Hancock. Then he got in Miller's way. Now Claremont can't control it. Green has it. Trovarello brilliantly done, but Muir went without it. Muir comes back and ties it up. Another chance for Trovarello. Smothered by Pios. Trovarello again. Bounce of the ball. Pios. There's a bit happening in there. Oh, boy. You don't want to make a mistake because... Uh, if you don't take it away at the first attempt, they are on you. That's the Subiaco contingent. Reggie Hampson in there. In the right forward foreground. Bounces it left centre wing for East Perth. Turnbull wins it down again. We expect that they'll win most of the knocks. That's Lyle kicking East Perth towards the 50 metre line. White down under pressure from Stone. Gorsi close to the boundary line. That was silly. He would have been better off running it out of play. Instead, he's conceded the kick about five metres up the ground. Interesting move with uh, Matt Gorsey playing back pocket today. He kicked three goals in a match-winning performance last week in Cease from Antle. But there is, squares it up, and White takes the mark. G. Stone just handed out a solid hip and shoulder to Devon Perry, and uh, he's, he is a ringing. White goes looking for Jerine. Can't get there, or does he? Pay on the call. Oh, he's paid the mark. Has he? Spilled out. There's no risk about that. Look at this, look at this. You be the judge. Sam Cronier has given that decision. Gee, anticipating. <clears throat> you must hold the ball indefinitely when you're on your own like that, I reckon. Oh, and in conditions like these too, Trev. So Jerine to shoot for goal. 25 metres out, 45 degree angle. The East Perth full forward splits the centre. He doesn't miss too many. He brings up the Royals second. They lead by one straight kick. Almost 16 minutes gone in the first term. 
Well, Chris Geryan will give it that goal will give him some confidence. The first contest opportunity had he let Phil Gilbert lead him to the football. The second time he worked pretty hard, and this time maybe taking his little bit of luck. Let's see if we, see if we can see it again. Well, there it was as he rolled over. A bit hard to see. Sam Cronin was on the right side of that decision. Maybe he just bounced it up a little bit and then let it drop once the whistle blew. Give him some confidence, that goal. Favours Egan. Turnbull arrives late. Egan got the tap. Out wide, Harvey. Runs into Colbung and dispossessed. Crumbs to Pike. Oh, neatly done, Don Pike. Pulls it across his body. Murillo had to wait. He's got the mark. Hand pass is over his head. Perhaps not paid. Comes back to Lyle. Lyle looks out very wide. Loving again. Takes the mark. Plays on quickly. Palms off Corsi. Goes for home from 45. And there's the first behind. Cappuccino says one point. Big day for him down there. Cappuccino kid, the goal umpire. Scott Loving has been outstanding in this first term. Yes, he's been the extra man up in the forward. He's playing for half forward flank, but played behind the play, TJ, and which has allowed Scott Edwards, his opponent, to do well at the other end. Oh, oh McGovern's shocking kick back into play. He's wide of the mark. It was intended for Marshall. There he is. And now East Perth bring it in. Roger Perry finds Devon, and he's 50 metres out. Devon Perry, quiet so far, heavy knock about uh, 15 minutes ago. He kicks from 50. The drop punt on the way is a good kick. Just swings away at the last moment. Bit of breeze there, isn't there? Yeah, carried that away left. 20 plays 12 here, 26, almost 26 and a half gone in the first quarter. Grand final from Subiaco Oval. Magnificent crowd, splendid conditions. And that didn't look possible last night either, about 10 o'clock. It was absolutely pouring down at the beach well. <laughs> Kings Park. I won't, the beach I won't I ask any more questions. Where I live. McGovern, a little undecided. He's been told to get on with it. Now he's going to lose it. He's going to lose it. Ooh, gee, he was lucky. He's kicked in the direction of Murillo, who's outnumbered. Spoiled by Lyle. In comes Roger Perry. Murillo got back into the contest pretty well. And there will be a bounce on East Perth's left half forward flank. It's about 60 metres from their goal. He looks about half rat power, Jamie Murillo. He's not going well, is he? He was cleaned up very early in this quarter. Whether he's suffering the effects yeah. of that knock, I don't know. He's now back on Lyle. Here's the bounce, close to the boundary line. Turnbull knocks it closer to the boundary line. But Theris, no pressure at all. Kicks back towards full forward. Chance here for East Perth. Right. Thumped towards the boundary line. Miller gets to it first. Tried to keep it in. But there will be a throw in. Left full forward for the Royals. To the next kick in that uh, Claremont have too. They can't let Andrew McGovern do it anymore. He's got the shakes, hasn't he? He kicked one out and he's undecided what to do. I've got to get another designated kicker. Now, the link man is Bathyrus. You can see left of screen there in these boundary throw-ins. Just watch his movements. He's getting the ball continuously. Jerrion and Stone. Stone does best. Edwards couldn't take it. Pike does. He's cornered. Gets the ball back towards the boundary line. That was a good kick, albeit that it landed with Swan. Another opportunity for Loving. Chips it across towards White. Who, no, he misses the mark. Was well done by Egan. Devon Perry has it. Gets the ball towards full forward. It's a good effort. Telling kick. Knocked towards Colburn. Here he is again. He's missed. missed. this one. Gee, should have done better, really. It was a great effort back there by McGovern, who threw himself at the ball, which was at Colbung's feet. But Sean Colbung would kick most of them. It's Kevin Worthington. Three goals, three. The return with the wind in the first quarter for Worthington's team. I'm not sure that he'd be totally happy with that. They've conceded two. Why is this boy still kicking in? But there, he's going to lose it now. Kicks very short and finds Don Pike in the pocket. But at least they've got the ball back in. And back it goes to McGovern. He can have a practice here. Decides to take Devon Perry on because Scott Edwards is loose on the point of the square. Beautifully weighted kick. And as Edwards took the mark, the siren sounded to mark the end of the first quarter in the 1996 Grand Final with East Perth leading 3-3-21 to Claremont's two goals straight 12. The margin nine points in favour of the Royals. Second quarter live from Subiaco Oval. The Royals start the second term with a nine-point lead. Turnbull not tapping it down effectively. Gives Murillo the chance to get it out of the centre. He was taken high as he kicked and Jamie Murillo will get a free kick just backward at the centre circle. 
his sixth possession. Don Pike had 10 in the first quarter for Claremont. Morello going straight down the centre of the ground, using this breeze. The kick doesn't have the carry it needs, and the East Perth defence totally misjudged that. They had the numbers at the fall of that mark, or that kick, and Ridley was the player who just charged through and took it on his chest. Now, he can kick this. He will kick from 50 metres. There is a southwesterly breeze at his back. He's kicked one so far. If he kicks it, he'll become the game's first multiple goal scorer. Todd Ridley kicking at the goal at the city end. Puts it up high. It starts right and comes back and splits the centre. And that's the start to the second term that Claremont would have been looking for. They move to three goals straight. East Perth are 3-3. Three, three. And all of their goals scored by experienced AFL players. Todd Ridley there with his seventh possession uh, for Claremont. For East Perth in the first quarter, Scott Loving had eight, Braden Lyle seven, Mark Faithful six, and Greg Jones five. And uh, Ryan Turnbull also had six possessions in the big man department. And he's really wanting desperately to get this ball forward for East Perth now. Here's the difference. Turnbull and Egan do battle again. Egan wins the tap, but straight down to East Perth. The kick to set a half forward. Punched away by Stone from White. Down comes Edwards. Pike tried to bustle his way through. Stone dives in on top of it. And another bounce. Set a half forward for East Perth. They'll be looking to get that goal back. Nick Stone, he's a tough competitor. Turnbull and Spencer back to back. But Theorist through the traffic. Good hand pass in defence to Loving. He kicks inside, set a half forward. Stone at the back. Nudges White underneath it. Gilbert fists away. Straight down to White. A snap round his body is a gem. Great kick, Jack White. The quick reply from the Royals. 27 plays 18. Two and a half minutes into the second quarter. Jewel, I'm sure if Phil Gilbert had have had some talking from his teammates here, he would have taken clean possession of this ball because, as you'll see in the replay, uh, he had a bit of time and he had a bit of space as well. But the quick thinking of Jeff White was absolutely terrific there. Stone and White. White does best. Decisively down to Bathyrus, who has the ball knocked away. Opportunity for Claremont to clear. Trovarello has it. No trip. No one laid the tackle. This is Marshall. Gets the kick in ahead of the Turnbull tackle. Turnbull put on just enough pressure, and Pios takes the mark. Standing behind guard. Plays on quickly to Lyle. It wasn't, I'm sorry, it was Barnard. This is Colbung. He's on the edge of the square. Kicks high towards full forward, looking for Gerain's height. Oh, Gilbert did well. And there's a chance now for Claremont to clear. Pike didn't, didn't have the ball. It's knocked out to Colbung, standing on his own. Shoots a goal and misses. Gee, that was an interesting situation. Pike appeared to be wrenched off the ball. He did have it, though. How did he get rid of it? That's the important thing. I think the umpires usually do pay holding the man, though. Well, you're right. I think Claremont have worked out this situation now with Scott Loving sitting behind the play. Here's Pike. Gets the ball down towards centre wing. Pios again. Guard just uh, dropping his guard a little at the moment. Now White is loose. Gee, where's Stone? East Perth mounting an attack from the members' wing, but they've been put under pressure. White's hand pass comes unstuck. Edwards gets it to Lewis. Lewis needed to go back and find it, but he did it well. Good shepherd from Muir gets rid of Lyle. Lewis in towards the pocket. Poor kick, but it lands with Ridley. He gets around one oncoming tackle. Hooks on goal, but hooks too much. Quick transference. Claremont's first behind, coming at the nine-minute mark of the second quarter. They're 4-1, East Perth are 4-4. Yes, the execution of the Jeff White hand pass there was very poor. And that caused the turnover. It'll be Paul Pios to put it back into play for the Royals. He goes short to the lead of Barnard. Wraps it up in the back pocket. Looking for the options. And he's going to go close to the boundary, looking for Loving over the top Muir. Muir, almost at ground level, won the footy. Colbung, though, sees the opportunity. Tried to go upfield with a hand pass, couldn't do that. And a boundary throw in. Forward of right centre wing for Claremont. Six possessions so far to Colbung. Egan reaching over the top, Turnbull. Shark by Murillo. Goes back to Gale. Through the traffic to Pike. Been a very good player. As Wall mentioned, constructive. That's a good-looking drop punt. Jones knocks away from Spencer, though and finds the, the white line. 
in the right full forward pocket. Jones has been firm in defence so far. Yes, yeah, Spencer really hasn't made an impact, and I think Daryl Panizza will consider a switch there at some stage. They do the ruck work now. Spencer brings it down, but straight to Roger Perry. Hand pass wildly. Green can't find the handle, and I thought kicked it out on the full. Boundary umpire didn't agree with me. But a lot of fumbling, hasn't there? A lot of handling errors on, in the pressure. Yes, that's uh, maybe not, not. not concentrating. Pike again. Kick was smothered. Lyle runs onto it. Behind centre half back. Brings it out the member's side of the ground. Swan and Ferguson. Ferguson's mark. 50 metres. He clipped yes. him under the air. Well, that's silly play by David Swan. Yes, well, here it is. I don't think there's any doubt about it happening. One more yet. One more. Umpire Wayne French gave that decision. So James Ferguson to shoot from 25 metres, maybe less. Bit of an angle. Drop punt. Good. Another goal to the Tigers. Claim on a 5 one They hit the front. East Perth at 4 4. 28. 11 and a half gone. James Ferguson finishing off well there with the 8 of the 50 metre penalty, which is a very tough penalty to give, of course. Braden Lyle getting the ball forward. But I don't think there's much doubt. Don't, don't think there's any doubt about that it happened. And there it was there. The last little right push to the head as Sean Colburn comes off. Blood roll. And I think Worthington will be having the runner go out to David Swan as well, wouldn't you think, Trev? Yes, he'll have to certainly be told about that. Well, he's become something of a goal-kicking wingman during these finals, James Ferguson. That's his fourth for the final series. And I didn't he didn't have too many during the year from memory. Only 13 goals for the year, and he's kicked four in the finals. So Jeff White now taking his turn on the ball. Turnbull goes to centre-half forward. Egan still there and having to do the lot for Claremont. Hurried kick from Swan. Down towards centre-half forward. Turnbull under pressure from Stone. The ball runs towards the left half-forward flank. Devon Perry comes up to meet it. He's cornered completely. He wasn't going anywhere. Except out of play. There's Devon Perry. One of nine interstate players in this East Perth team this afternoon. As Turnbull gets the ball to the side of the pack. Chance there for Hancock. He tried to go through the pack. Was lucky. Lucky not to be penalised. Green has it. There's an East Perth player down behind play. It's Swan who's limping. As Lewis runs away from the half-back line. Kicks towards half-forward. Beautiful kick too. Pike pushed off the ball. Play allowed to go on. East Perth have the numbers, but Clemont wanted it more. Here's Egan. Oh, brilliantly played by the big fella. Then miss kicks. Bounce is pretty important here. Jones is able to control it. Pios is loose between half-back and centre wing. And he's got room in which to run. The Theris in turn is loose at half forward, but he's overrun that offer now. No, he hasn't. The Theris moves towards the boundary line. Looking a little heavy-legged. Kicks in towards full forward. Chance here for East Perth. Gorsi, well done. Swept the ball away like a big broom. Got it over the line for throwing it right full forward. Claremont a 5-1. East Perth a 4-4. The Tigers lead by three points. And we've played nearly 14 minutes in the second term in the 1996 Grand Final. Well done by Gorsi. Hasn't got a lot of kicks, but he's kept Millerbelly quiet. Turnbull may be the side of the pack there. And Marshall clears it away momentarily. However, Ferguson, no, the backup of Lewis was good. When it goes to Marshall, nicely done by the Tigers' defence that time. Pushed as he kicked there. Coming down to meet it, Egan. And close to the boundary, it's worked over finally. There's Neil Marshall there showing more, <coughs> more confidence now that he's playing against Shane Bond, his West Coast Eagles teammate. He has lifted, hasn't he, Marshall? That was well, a good he had Roger Perry before. I think it's too, too strong and tall for him. Egan does battle with White. Egan fell over. White got the big tap to the side of the pack. The theorists again bundled out of the way by Trovarello. Picked up by Gale to Ferguson. Back with a left centre wing. He kicks it upfield wide of Pios. Pios close to the boundary. Is forced out, was he? No, play on the call. And Spencer goes hard in on Jones, and Marshall takes the relieving mark again. Now Lewis, he's kicked a half forward. Coming down to meet at Silcock. Fists it away there from Spencer. Pike and Silcock do battle. Silcock's hand pass, picked up by Guard. He wobbles it up towards Ridley. He's in front of Perry. Now Muir, close to the white line. Muir, caught, dumped. 
picked up by Perry. He kicks to half back and finds Mathiris, and the Royals out of bother. Gee, that was a great tackle back there in the back pocket. Away goes Mathiris, takes Lewis on. Delayed the kick, gets it to half forward. Perry in front, taken away from him by McGovern. This is a terrific game. McGovern's hand pass, shark by Miller. Colburn knocked it to Devon Perry. Perry goes back, claims the ball, Greens body slams him into the turf. The umpire's letting it go, and there'll be a bounce just outside 50 metres. That was a torrid passage of play. It doesn't get any better. It doesn't get any harder. Oh. Let's have another look at the tackle or some of the tackles we saw in there Brendan Green and Devon Perry and down goes Devon Perry bang chance here for Claremont to clear the ball through Green he kicked that cleverly it just eludes Fer Ferguson and runs out of play between left center wing and left half forward for East Perth well the beauty of it Trevor it's tough but there's no spite and it's good clean tough football it is indeed hard and fair Chance at the back, taken, cleared by Green for Claremont, but that's a dangerous kick in towards the centre square. Pios picks it up, the hand pass, Miss Miller, too clever. Gale tidies up, puts it out in front of Guard, who's Pios's opponent. Guard runs to centre wing, kicks high towards half forward, Marillo behind his opponent, but a chance now for Claremont. Marillo has it, oh, I'm not sure about the kick. Yes, to Ridley, great kick. I thought he was going to Muir. I didn't see Ridley streaming out from the goal square. To Jamie Murillo, Murillo's credit, he did. And now Todd Ridley can have another shot at goal. He's kicked three of Claremont's five. The others have been kicked by Chris Lewis and James Ferguson. That was a terrific kick by Murillo. He knew he was there. He just caught him out the corner of his eye and off the left boot. Now, southwesterly breeze blowing over Ridley's right shoulder will blow the ball from right to left. It's a good kick. Oh, what a kick from Todd Ridley. This has been a master stroke by Daryl Panizza. He's moved Ridley to full forward for the start of the second quarter. He had a variety of players there early, including Spencer at one stage. And Ridley has now kicked his fourth goal. Claremont moved to 6-1. East Perth at 4-4. Yes, there was the... This is the passage of play leading up to it. A hand pass from Lane Spencer, who's starting to give a contest at centre half forward now. And that kick was meant for Todd Ridley from Jamie Morello as Damian Hancock comes off off screen and Warland comes on. The kick from Ridley is true. I've just been watching Chris Lewis. I just think he's starting to feel the effects of that ankle now. Maybe the injection wearing off. Comments from Trevor Sprigg back in the middle. White and Egan both misjudged it. Coming through Warland. It's a hand pass win, tackled strongly by Gar, but picked up by Miller. He kicks it inside, set a half forward. Oh, it bounced away from Geron. Claremont there in number. McGovern <laughs> returned into his own man, Gilbert. Too many. <laughs> Too many Tigers spoiled the broth. The lair was overflowing. It was. Andrew McGovern finally had to kick to the safety of the white line. Stone and Turnbull. Turnbull palms it down, but Green, tackle, we're not in possession, I thought. Trovarello dives in, umpire will bounce it. Brendan Green questions the umpire about that. Starting oh. to come into the game a bit Don't now, Green. Silly. I think he's a bit stiff here. I thought he hand-passed. Was the ball tapped out of his hand. Turnbull up, beaten there by Stone. Shark by Warland, snap at goal. Not a bad kick, just outside the square. Jerome, strong, down the Colbert. French can't understand what all the it's all about and you'll see this here there's no risk that he held that mark uh, on well, no did he? did he hold the mark yeah he did yeah he certainly paid the mark yes, he signaled straight away before the before the ball slipped out and I think it was the right decision he should kick the goal anyway it'll be the same result there'll be some noise if he doesn't no Rocky Gerard can do anything he's kicking from 20 meters 45 degree angle Shouldn't be a problem. Jerome shoots and kicks it. He's got two for the game. The Royal strike back. They get to within three points of Claremont. 20 minutes gone in this second term in what's turning out to be a great grand final.
and that's the that's the way that if East Perth can get the ball forward with Duran just with a, a yard on his opponent here and Phil Gilbert has done a terrific job just can't make up the space there a great crumb from trip from uh, Sean Colbuck anyway. it was, wasn't it? and it was right in underneath but few moves being made now different players coming in on the ball loving and Murillo in there now for Claremont and East Perth respectively three points the margin the Tigers lead White palming the ball down. Chance for Spencer. Knocked away from him. Hurried kick by Jones. Gets to Swan in the centre circle. Loving sweeping through. Edwards couldn't get it. Socket forward by East Perth. Warland has just come onto the ground. Met solidly by McGovern. Oh, that's cool. That, that wasn't so cool. Back Claremont lucky not to be penalised. Hooked out of the off the ground by Marshall. The ball goes back towards centre wing. Miller and Trovarello. Miller with just enough pace to get away from Trovarello. Oh, back to half forward. Swan and Ferguson. Ferguson misses the mark. Gets it down to guard. Guard's kick was smothered and down the ground he goes. Pios standing all alone. 30 metres off the play. He's guard's opponent. Yes, and that's a worry because East Perth will use him from there. Now guard goes back to pick him up. Bounces in the centre square but towards half forward. Green with a hurried kick. Just clears Loving. Opportunity for Lane Spencer. Gets it to guard. Was well done. Here's Pike. He's been dangerous. Goes long. Lewis is the target. Lewis at the back. Takes the mark. Strolls to the goal line. He kicks his second. The Tigers lead by nine points. He's worth having on the ground. There's some similarities here between the situation with Tony Lockett and the Sydney Swans last night. Oh, look at the wincing with pain there. Yes, Tim Johnston come on for Lane Spencer. That surprises me. Spencer's just come into the game. He's gone into the well. ruck. Yes, and that was a good work there by Chris Lewis, just getting his opponent out of the way. I think there's no risk of the injection that Lewis has had is starting to wear off, and he's now very sore. He'll have another one at half time. Ten possessions already and two goals, a great contribution. Nine points in favour of the Claremont Tigers. Lewis fitting that ankle at the moment. White wins the tap. Down to Miller. Miller trying to find a space through. Bad hand pass. Set loving up. Good tackle, but it came back to Warland. He's kicked the set of half forward. Turnbull and Stone do battle. Neither can get it. Picked up by Lyle. Check side kick up towards full forward. Jerain, brilliant. Now he dummies around Gilbert. Puts back on goal. Magnificent kick. Played it like a rover. He's got three now, Chris Jerain. And that's his best. Well, this game's got everything. It's as good a game as you'll see at Subac Global this year, AFL standard and all. Just the way these players are going at it. Brayton Lyle getting the ball forward. And look at Rocky. Sold the dummy to Phil Gilbert. And over the shoulder it goes from 45. That's the goal of the game, Trev. Great, great effort. Free kicks, East Perth 6, Claremont 3 from our statisticians. Stacey, ha, 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 rabba. Claremont a 7 one East Perth a 6 4 40. The Royals tagging Claremont through the second quarter. White gets the ball down. Taken by Bond. Bond oh, kicks up towards half forward. Another chance for Bathyrus. He oh. was taken high. That's reportable. Plays on quickly to Bond. Bond kicks in towards full forward. Gilbert and Jerine. Chance for Gorsi at the back. He can't control the ball. Gee, I can't get over the number of ball handling errors. It wouldn't be nerves at this stage of the so game. Pressure, pressure more well. likely the pressure. I'm just glad Sullivan's not playing on Gilbert down there. Gee, look at well, that. Edwards was the player who went high on Bathyrus. McGovern has the ball at full back. Now, he's had some problems getting the ball in. He's indicating to players he wants to go further. He's got to kick it now. He's got problems. There is no one to kick it to. That's intended for Johnson. Chance at the side of the pack for Marshall. He couldn't control it. Muir gets it out. That was well done. Hooks onto centre wing. Guard is badly outnumbered. He's a pretty talented player, but Pios doesn't lack any skill either. He gets the ball back to a teammate who kicks onto the half forward line. Marshall has it. Gives it straight away to Loving. Loving is at 50 metres. Kicks high and long. It's a goal. He's further in front. Unbelievable goal from Scott Loving. But very little pressure applied on the boundary line. Daryl Peneza, a little bit disconsolate with his back line at the moment. Well, that was an amazing situation. Neil Marshall had possession of the ball. I don't know how Scott Loving ended up with it. 
I think he just stole it from him. We'll see if we can see here. There's a there's the ball. Stole now, it. Yeah, it was just tapped away, I think. Daylight rubbery. Yeah. And Loving should have gone for the top of the goal square from deep in the full forward pocket. And now it's on. Rocky Gerard and Phil Gilbert are into it. No, it's Spencer, uh, it's I think. Lane Spencer. Gee, where's this and bit going? Left and right. The play goes on. Play goes on back in the middle of the ground. Oh, they're coming from everywhere. This is almost out of control here at the moment. There's a brawl going on in the goal square, and players are going to that goal square to support their teammates. But in the meantime, the free kick has gone to Bond at set a half forward. Now it's been broken up. It's erupted. Bond from the center square, drop punt. Turnbull will be in the pack. Fisted away by Spencer. Crow there. Going in hard was Johnston, and it's forced over the boundary. Well, Trevor was bubbling, but as I said a few moments ago, there was no spite, and all of a sudden it's certainly bubbled right over. Well, Lane Spencer went down oh. and told uh, Rocky Gerard, his former teammate, I think he's fortune, and all of a sudden it erupted. From the side, Stone, clean position, good tackle by Turnbull. Miller po poked it out. Cole Bone from the right full forward pocket, flattened as he kicked. It's offline anyway, out of bounds on the full. It's a grand final. It's going to be remembered as it was last year. Look at this bump. Very heavy by McGovern as he kicked. So Lewis, who was down the other end a few moments ago, wincing yeah. in pain. Yes, as soon as East Perth got a run on, Lewis has come back on the ball. He finds McGovern. Pike, neat hand pass. Whoops, watch the shepherd. He goes across <laughs> the full back line. Ryan got around Spencer then, so Pike cuts back in board into the corridor. Well done, Don. And he kicks towards halfback. Rocky gave up the chase. Trovarello feeds Lewis from right centre wing. He kicks out wide for Brendan Green, who runs onto it, trapped it nicely from a standing start. Kicks into the pocket, looking for Gilbert. Gilbert's uh, spilled the mark. Barnard close to the white line. Gets it upfield to Faithful Ooh. over the top. But sharked away by Gale. Good oh. smother by Warland. Chance for Lewis. Oh, well Paddled it back to Pike. Pike's kick into the pocket. Jones in the pack, and so is uh, Lyle. Lyle, it is, who's taken the mark. And again, the ups the Clement have upset their balance a little bit. They've got Ridley, who's kicked four goals now at centre half forward, and Gilbert's gone to full forward. Hard to work that out. Loving unattended on the half back line. Marillo gets there to stand the mark. East Perth have weathered that little attack. Loving kicks up towards centre wing, Turnbull the target, and he fists it away from Ferguson for a throw-in at right centre wing for East Perth. Turnbull is there, Johnston coming across to contest this boundary throw-in. He's just come onto the ground, giving Egan a rest. Takes front position, Miller with a good hand pass to Loving, he's been damaging, kicks high towards half forward. Well done by Marshall. Miller runs onto it. Good tackle. Turns it over. Marshall has it. Usually uses the ball well. Finds Johnston. We've played 28 and a half minutes. Won't be a long quarter. The kick goes towards half forward. Not a good kick. Lack the carry it needed. And it was easily chopped off in defence. Now loving again. Could have been an extended penalty. East Perth lead by three points, as they did at quarter time. Loving stats impressive. 7-5 seven, to 7-1. Seven, Sorry, it's four points. Opportunity now for Stone. He tried to keep that in. Not sure the wisdom of that. It's still in. Well played, Bathurus. Oh. High tackle on Bathurus. Gee, Claremont could have done better. They need to just keep their composure here, Claremont. They... They'll go to White at half forward. Todd Ridley. White's running in towards the hole. Up he goes and takes the mark. That was so predictable, and now they're streaming back to the goal square. McGovern and Crow. Crow with the height. McGovern, well done. Oh, gee. He played well, McGovern, Trev. He was under some pressure then, I can tell you. Apart from his kick-ins, where he's got the jitters. Yes. That's the only problem, but his defence work has been good. He wants to bring it in quickly this time, but he doesn't have any options. He finally goes into the pocket. Spencer. Crowd don't like him very much. Back to McGovern. Haven't gained a lot. Lewis breaks, but he goes shorter and finds Edwards. A lot of experience here. Now a chance for East Perth to break it up. Turnbull beats Stone for it, goes for goal and kicks it. 
They were fiddling Clermont. Turnbull jumped into the gap. Went straight for the big opening and put it through. 54 plays 43, close to half time in a tremendous half of football. Yes, and uh, Ryan Turnbull just knew exactly what was happening here. He anticipated the zone defence. He'd sat off, sat off till the right time. And then even when he was approaching the ball, I knew that he had the goals in his sights. And he finishes off pretty well there. Claremont has surrendered a couple of goal lead here. And they've just lost their composure momentarily. Still bewildered by the move of Ridley Trevor. He's at centre-half forward now. He kicked four goals at full forward. There's the bounce. Up goes White. He had the run at the ball. Opportunity for Claremont to take it away. Lewis goes off the ground. Miller has pushed into the ball. Loving has it. Gets around one tackle, but not the next. Pike appeared not to have the ball. Play Claremont it. player down. I'm not sure who it is. Just off the ball. Knew it. Knew where it is. He gets to his feet now. There's Peneza. 31 minutes gone. East Perth will go into halftime with a handy break. At the moment, it's 11 points. They led by nine points at East Perth at a quarter time. And that's the halftime score and another skirmish now. Oh. Swan is in there. So too is Johnston. Chris Lewis getting involved. Faithful in there. Greg Jones just breaking things up. And now players come from all over the ground. And it's all sorted itself out. Faithful and Gorsi want to go on with it. At half, time, here. at half time, East Perth are 8-6-54. It's going to be 7-1. 7-1-43. The margin is 11 points at half time. <laughs> It's White on the ball against Egan. There's the difference. The bounce favours Egan. Miller contested and won the knock actually there. Lyle runs onto it, backs away from Trovarello. Kicks long towards full forward. Jerine up. Didn't mark. Gorsi, I thought he was taken high. The umpire said that's okay. Watch again as Jerine misses the mark and then, gee, was it the shoulders? Maybe just okay. Stone nudges Turnbull out of the way and gives away the free kick. Not a good effort then from Nick Stone. Yeah, some frustration there. Well, this is just what the Royals wanted after the halftime break to establish what could now be a 17-point lead. Turnbull to shoot from 30 metres. 45 degree angle he kicked a beauty in the second term when he anticipated a move out of defense from the Tigers drops it on the boot and misses no it swung in that was heading for the post he's got his second with a very good drop punt angled it nicely to bring up full points for the Royals well it's it's the start that East Perth would have needed let's see this free kick here yeah, a bit crude by Stone. He had his eye on the ball, but he knew where the player was. Getting straight into his back. There was no Shepard or anything like that there. And really a foolish move by Nick Stone. An inexperienced one. Big job in front of the Tigers now. East Perth lead by 17 points. White wins the ball down. Lyle couldn't take it away. Pike gets a kick to half forward. Chance for Pios. Holding the ball. Player allowed to go on. Yeah. Johnston has it. Hand passes straight to Bathyrus. He loses it. Pike couldn't pick it up. And there will be a bounce almost on the edge of the centre square with Clermont in attack. The main possession getters in the first half. For East Perth, Loving had 12 kicks and two hand passes. There's the bounce. Knocked away by White, straight to Miller. It'll land with Bond. East Perth looking good in the opening minutes of the third term. The kick towards full forward. Colbung and Gorsi. Colbung not paid the mark. He's holding the ball then. No one was holding him. Yeah, they had him, I think. They dragged him down. Lyle had ten kicks in the first half. 
There it is again. Gauzy clearly had that first purchase on that. The right decision by umpire yep. French. Bounce it centre half forward for East Perth. Turnbull and Stone. Turnbull does best. Marshall knocks it forward. Edwards knocks it into the pocket. First two it is Bond. He's holding the ball this time. Surely tried to duck out of the tackle. Throw in at left full forward for East Perth. 40 metres around. There's Daryl Panizzer. He's got some problems. East Perth have kicked the first goal in the third quarter. Oh, oh. gee. Turnbull with clean possession. Clemont under all sorts of pressure at the moment. There'll be a bounce. Lyle, as I said, had 10 kicks, no hand passes. Bathira, seven kicks, four hand passes. They were the only East Perth players with 10 possessions or more. For Claremont, Pike had 16 kicks, no hand passes. Lewis had 11 kicks and two hand passes. Warland allowing the ball to slip through his fingers. Trovarello to the boundary line. And McGovern had six kicks and four hand passes. A few absentees during that first half. Silcock had one kick and one hand pass. Crow had one hand pass for the half. Hancock, four kicks. Boundary thrown is at left half forward for East Perth. Turnbull knocks it inside 50 metres. Marshall comes to meet it, overruns the ball. Gorsi was one who didn't have big possessions in the first half. One kick, two hand passes. As Claremont get the ball around the outer side of the ground. Gilbert had one kick, one hand pass. And Egan had one kick and one hand pass. As Gard takes a very good mark on the outer side of the ground. And now brings it in dangerously. Lewis, spoilt there by Bathyrus. Pushed out towards Lyle. He's in the centre square. Drop punt, probing kick. Spencer in front takes the mark. He'll hold up this royal attack. And he brings it out to the member's side to find Scotty Edwards. The move is from Gale. Close to the white line. Too far over. Bad kick from Edwards. Not a great deliverer of the football, Scott Edwards. Now Barnard kicks to half forward. And the Bathyrus working his way into this game. Drop punt. Goes looking for Jerrine at the back, Spencer. Jerrine almost the mark. Shoveled out by Spencer. Lewis pushes it wide outside the 50 now and clears to the outer side of the ground. Guard, good mark. Juggled it, held it, back into the middle. Drop punt towards Ridley. He's the danger man as far as East Perth are concerned. At ground level now, it's knocked forward. This is Egan. Guard.